Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I was asked to make a simple watercolor tutorial by a friend and I decided to make it a video tutorial instead of jotting my process down on a single image for you all to read. Okay, but I've never made a video tutorial before, so I hesitated to work on it until like two months later after drawing this illustration you see me working on in this recording. So I hope this simple tutorial explains my process good enough. When deciding the drawing, I had my Patreons vote on what the example should be for the tutorial, and Fran from Final Fantasy XII won the poll. And sadly, this is my second attempt at drawing her. I, f I felt that the first one looked a bit too detailed to be a simple watercolor tutorial, which was a shame because I spent quite a bit of time working on it, but oh well. But that's okay. I think that the second attempt looks better anyway. It looks more appropriate for a simple tutorial example, and I just really like how it turned out. The character has huge hair, and so I decided to exaggerate it further in the second drawing because I love drawing huge hair. And also, she's a bunny girl, so who would complain about drawing that subject any, you know, a second time? Anyway, as you can see, I have recorded footage of myself penciling and inking this baby up just to be filler for this beginning narration part. And I think I'm done now, so let's start on with this tutorial, shall we? Alright, so this is my basic setup whenever I do these watercolor illustrations. I have multiple watercolor palettes to the left of my picture and then some folded paper towels with a glass container of water on my right. And when using watercolor, it is always good to have a watercolor swatch reference of each of your colors showing their lightest to darkest pigments so you know exactly what to expect when you apply color to your paper. For this tutorial, the watercolor brand I will be using is called Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolors, and I'll be using them for the flats. I like using them because they're very vibrant and just look very satisfying on cartoon character art. Anyway, this particular watercolor brand is expensive, so I don't suggest you to go out and buy this if you're a newbie to watercolors. I suggest using another brand instead, such as like praying or anything that's less pricey. So here I'm grabbing a brush and I don't want something too big because I need to paint in between my line work. I dampen my brush and wipe off any unnecessary additional water onto the paper towel and I personally like starting out coloring the character's skin first and Fran's skin is brown so I take some of the brown paint that I just placed on the palette and I apply it to the paper. Every so often I get little dust fuzzies at the ends of my paint brushes so I have to pull them off with my fingers otherwise it will cause me to accidentally paint outside my lines. And I think the fuzzies are most likely from my fluffy kitties that I have at home. But that's okay. I love my kitties. I went and applied pigment to the rest of Fran's exposed skin and now I'm grabbing a water dropper tool because I'm going to use some black paint that has been applied to my palette from previous illustrations. It's nice and dry on there, so using the dropper tool is a lot faster to reactivate watercolor pigment than trying to get it damp again using a wet brush. Doing it this way saves a lot of time. Here I am applying the black paint. When switching back to a lighter color, it is wise to empty and refill the water jar, otherwise the dark paint pigment in the water will affect the lighter colors that's applied next and we do not want that. To do gradients, I lighten up the pigment at the edge of where I want to apply another color, and I add the other color while the previous color is still kind of wet, so blending will be smooth. Sometimes I fail to get the paints blended in time before they dry, like in big areas when I stupidly decide to use a small brush, but um, that's no biggie because I sort of know a way to get around that. If the watercolor gradient becomes too dry to blend, I usually apply another color anyway, <laughs> but when I do that, the blending isn't the smoothest, 
and I'll get a texture, but sometimes it can make your picture look kind of neat. And uh, although if that's something that you don't want, then colored pencils is an option and it, it could f easily fix up your problems later when everything is all nice and dry. Now here at this point, I realize I made a mistake on Fran's thigh highs. There was supposed to be parts of her skin showing through the leggings and I forgot to do that. So now here I am using my brush to erase some of the pigment. And since the watercolor is still wet, I'm able to easily do that by drying off my brush using the paper towel. And then I pick up the pigment with my brush tip and then I put it back in the water uh, and dry it off again on the towel and I re repeat doing that until I get as much pigment off as I can. Erasing watercolor like this has its limits though. Not all of it will come off to make the paper a pure white again. But that's okay. Her skin is like brown and I can add some colored pencil over it to help make it look like skin showing through again. So anyway, I always start applying the flats to the character of the image first before I start working on the background. And the flats usually consist of light colors, which include skin blushes, as well as gradients and patterns. And I usually don't get too dark on my first layer unless I knowingly want parts of the character, character to pop out a bit more. Sometimes I shade the character first before working on the background, but this time I just kind of went ahead and did it. And as you can see, I didn't use a very large brush here, but that's because I'm trying to avoid going over the character's lines. I feel I have more control when I'm using a smaller brush, and I am also using a small brush because I just, you know, I want to get into all the little details of the nooks and crannies that's against the character and it's kind of hard to do all that when using a larger brush. But yeah, I'm sure there's like some sort of masking fluid or tape out there that you can apply over the character first. So you can use a large brush to safely paint over it and you can just take it off later. But applying all that takes time and I'm lazy. So I feel that if I'm a little sloppy with my painting work, here and there, you know, I could just grab a colored pencil or something and touch it up over it later. While one area of my painting is still drying, I usually head over to another side and start watercoloring there. Rarely do I ever use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. Once the flats on the image are all applied, I go in with darker pigments and apply it to the character using a small brush. For this part of the painting process, if you haven't planned out your light source already, this is where you really need to. Figure out where the light is hitting your character and apply the shadows accordingly. Sometimes when I am shading, I use blue by default in some areas, especially when I'm doing digital work. But usually when it comes to my watercolors, I only like to take a darker pigment of the lighter one I've used already for the flats, or at least something similar to it. And like in this particular area, I want Fran's hair to feel like a creamy light brown color. And so I get that sort of look when I add brown shading. And I never use black for shading anything unless it's on top of other black pigments or if I'm trying to make blue or purple look even darker than they already are. So the last step is details. It's probably the most time consuming part of all my illustrations. I take a small brush and I shade and shade and shade so that pretty much every object in the picture is identifiable. And I shade usually in two layers. One shade is a bit lighter, and then the second one is a bit darker. The deeper the crevice, usually the darker the shade will be. Unless, of course, the light source is hitting the object pretty harsh, then I'd give that area a dark shading too. Watercolors like to lighten when they dry, and sometimes I forget this, so I have to go over the area again with a darker pigment. 
Anyway, so that's the basics of how I watercolor. I kept doing touch-ups even after this video recording was over because I noticed things I've missed later down the road. And I didn't show it, but I added highlights using my Presto whiteout pen, and I also did extra little adjustments using my Prismacolored pencils. I usually use the colored pencils for areas that are too annoying to handle with my watercolor brush, such as thin detail line work or random minor extra dark shading areas. Um, but there you have it. That's my tutorial, and I hope it was good enough. I've never made a video tutorial before. This was probably more of a process description more than any tutorial, but I hope you got something useful out of this video, and I wish you all the best if you all decide to follow this tutorial and watercolor something. <sighs> but anyway, take care everyone, and I'll talk with you all again later in the next video. Bye.